What is the most hurtful thing a medical professional has ever said to you? Doctor. Glances at my genitals, you have herpes. Me. But I've never had sex. Doctor. Oh. Stop crying. I diagnose this all the time. It's pretty common. Me. But aren't you going to at least do a test? Doctor. Fine. But it's going to hurt and it's going to show herpes. Indeed. It was an allergic reaction to a medication. Edit. Wow. Thanks for the gold. I appreciate it smiley face. Me with my pants down. Getting checked for a hernia. Doctor. Are you able to get an erection? Me. That is an erection. Edit. Wow. A lot of people asking why you need an erection for a hernia exam. You don't. The doctor was asking if I was able to get one. Since a hernia can affect your genitals. And the doctor was just just checking. I went to the doctor's office as a child because I was terribly ill and throwing up. The doctor asked if school exams were coming up. I said yes. She simply said MMMHMM. That explains it then. And then she rolled her eyes. I had to take my son to the ER when he was two because he was having trouble breathing. The ER doc said he most likely had asthma. So she gave us an inhaler. Flash forward three day when we go to have his follow up with his pediatrician. Dr. Jackass. So. He saw this ER doctor once in his life and you trusted her to make a lifelong determination that your son has asthma? That's pretty ridiculous. Six months later. After three more ER visits with my son being unable to breathe. Doctor. Jackass. It looks like I owe you an apology. It turns out your son quite likely does have asthma. Not to me. But to my mom. Doctor. Said, oh just let him hide in the bathroom. I hid in the bathroom when I got really bad headaches that turned out to be due to a brain tumor. Doc must have assumed I was masturbating. New doctor took my height measurement and jots it down before issuing me a very casual. Ha. Huh. Tall for a woman. I am a bearded man. Came in for something totally different and she commented on my stretch marks on my hips and around my breast. I was around 17 years old and had gotten them when I hit puberty because I developed so much in a short amount of time. I explained this to her and she had a whole dialogue with herself about her originally thinking it would have been because I used to be fat. And after my explanation just lamenting about how sad it was for me that I would have to live my entire life with a body like that. Changed doctor the next day. When I was 16 and dealing with partial deafness, sometimes being a teenage girl is hard. But it's hard to parent them too so there's no need to exaggerate things to make things harder for your parents. Knock it off. There's nothing wrong with you. Two tumors. Nine surgeries. And a CSF leak later. Yes doctor. There really was something wrong. Was having digestive issues I eventually learned were a result of my undiagnosed cancer. Doctor suggested I should wipe better. Three months ish pregnant. Start spotting. Spend about 10 hours at the hospital. Vaginal ultrasounds. Lots of diagnostic testing. Nothing they can do. Tell me to go home and wait to miscarry. I'm a wreck. It's now late. Dark and rainy outside. But I don't have a way to get home because hubby is at work with our only car, was very young and poor. Doc says the nurses have taxi vouchers they can give me to get home. Go to nurse's station. Ask for a taxi voucher. Nurse says we only give taxi vouchers to women who have living babies. Edit. Long time lurker. And don't post much. So still learning the ropes. Thanks for the gold. Silver. Plat. Also. Till that trying to respond to comments on mobile doesn't work very well skeptical smiley face. Thanks so much for all of your kind words. If you take anything away from this. Please let it be the fact that young people sometimes need a little help navigating life. This nurse's one comment caused me years of being afraid to ask for things for fear of being not only turned down but also humiliated. TLDR try not to be a dick. I woke up in the hospital and heard a nurse running out saying, he's awake. The doctor comes into the room and tells me to move my toes. I ask them where I am and what's going on. He just gets more insistent that I move your toes. I asked again where I was and that was going on. He almost yells at me, move your toes. I said I am moving my toes. And immediately he says, you will never walk again. That's how I found out I was a paraplegic at 21 years old. I had been in a single car wreck and was thrown 70 to 80 feet from the car and my vertebrae was dislocated and laying next to another one. I don't remember the car wreck but that exchange with the doctor. 
is burned into my brain. And that was 31 years ago. Edit 1. Damn this blew up. Thank you to you all for your comments. I had a seatbelt on but went off a small hill next to the interstate after clipping an end of the guardrail. Flipped the car down the hill and seat and seatbelt gave way under the pressure and I went out the driver door window. My back collapsed around the door sill and dislocated one vertebra next to the one below it. I'm a big guy 6 feet 4 inches and 235 at the time and the force was too much for the seat structure. I found out all these details over the next few weeks while I was in rehab. Edit 2. Gold and silver thank you. Didn't think this story would touch as many as it has. When I was like 5 to 8 mom took me to the dentist and he was stabbing above and under my tongue and the inside of my cheeks and he said if you cry I am going to start over. Edit 0. I did cry at some point during a regular procedure and he did start stabbing everywhere in my mouth again. Edit 1. He was stabbing me with the tool dentists use to clean your teeth and remove plaque. No needles were involved. The suggestion that I had confused a panic attack for a seizure. To clarify. This was my first grand mal seizure. My father had them prior. And my mother witnessed both him having one and myself having mine. According to her, it was identical. I even hid all the textbook marks of having had an epileptic seizure. From the memory loss to the pastictal fatigue. The emergency room doctor didn't run any tests. Or examine my family history of epilepsy. He simply noticed the anxiety disorder in my medical history and assumed that I was just having a panic attack and wrote it off as my only issue being that I'd hit my head. Talking to my psychiatrist later about the incident. He confirmed based only on my account, corroborated with mom's details where I couldn't fill in, that I had definitely had a seizure. And he sent the orders for further testing himself. He also couldn't refrain from saying, what the fuck is wrong with this doctor? I'm glad that at least one of my doctors took my seriously. Once phoned a doctor about a lump I'd found on my balls. He said is it black and the size of a tennis ball? To which I said no. And he said it's nothing to worry about then and hung up. Edit. It ended up being a cyst that I had checked out and was luckily fine. Didn't expect my balls to blow up so much. But I'd hope they'd one day earn me gold. Thank you kind sir. Blessings of Stendar upon ye. Getting out of the army you are 100% healthy. My medical record was about 6 inches thick. Went to a civilian doctor and they were astonished anyone would say that. I am rated 80% disabled. You can't be in that much pain. You must have more energy than that. Turns out the lining of my nerves was being destroyed. I was becoming paralyzed. Painfully. My doctor didn't actually speak. His reaction was worth a thousand words though. He literally rolled his eyes. Threw his head back and sighed very loudly. I had been having a semi-regular pain in my abdomen for years. A terrible cramping pain, I'm a man so it wasn't menstrual in nature, that would double me over in pain and would last for a day or two and then go away. I had seen a few different doctors about it and none of them could figure it out. I was seeing a gastroenterologist about another problem and mentioned my pain to him. He did some tests, tried a few things, did an endoscopy and told me he couldn't find anything wrong. The next time I got the cramping pains I went back to him and he performed his non-verbal routine mentioned above. It would have been less hurtful if he just told me I was a hypochondriac. I gave up on figuring out the pain. Fast forward a few years and I'm having a bout of these cramps. Middle of the night I get up to go to the bathroom. I puke my guts out and proceed to pass out on the bathroom floor for a few seconds. I make it back to bed without waking my wife and somehow fall back asleep. In the morning I get up and need to puke again. My wife goes with me out of concern and I pass out on the toilet. She calls 911 and I get whisked away to the hospital. Didn't take too long for the doctors to determine I had a bowel obstruction. After 6 hours of surgery and a subsequent week stay in the hospital I'm back home and feeling better than I have in years. Turns out that I had a 99% bowel obstruction caused by adhesions that had been slowly developing on my intestines since an appendectomy that I had in 1980. The surgeon told me that it was so bad in a few places that my intestines had been twisted on themselves. He referred to it as a rat's nest. The surgery was in March. 2017. And not only have the cramps not come back once. I haven't felt this great in decades. TLDR. Doctors couldn't find a problem with me. 
made me feel like a hypochondriac for almost 20 years. Turns out I had bowel obstruction caused by a surgery that took place 37 years earlier. Edit. A few quick things. I wanted to say thanks for the silver. I wasn't expecting anyone to even see this little story of mine. I made a few responses in the comments but I did want to add a little to the story. My original appendectomy in 1980 became infected which led to a second surgery to remove the infection. This was an 8-hour surgery that left me with a 9-inch scar on my abdomen. The eventual bowel obstruction wasn't always an obstruction. It was just adhesions on my intestines that were restricting my natural muscular movements and leading to occasional intense pain and constipation. I'm pretty certain the only way this could have been found was with an exploratory laparoscopy. Which is exactly what happened once it turned into an obstruction and an emergency room visit. The good news is that I got fixed. I'm a much happier person. And I can poop better than ever before. It wasn't so much what they said to me. But the earth staff made me wait 6 hours with a dead organ inside me acting like I was being a drama queen because I was in so much pain. Edit. Thank you to everyone who has reached out to wish me well or share their own story of overlooked and dismissed pain. I hope that you are all healed and doing well. To the people telling me it's not that bad because I didn't have a heart attack or stroke or I'm not dead. I hope that your innards don't just up and die inside of you. That would be terrible. Indian female here. I can't go to most gynecologists here. Because they are so judgmental. The last visit I had was brutal. I was slut shamed for losing my virginity before my marriage and then given an extremely painful transvaginal ultrasound. When I yelled out in pain. She said, but you are used to things inside you. Shook me to my core. Can't summon enough courage to visit a gynecologist anymore now. Edit. This happened in New Delhi. India. Also thanks for the reddit gold dear internet stranger. Wasn't said to me. But someone I knew. I work at a hospital. So does my mother. We had a 43 year old woman who had a very rare form of cancer that spread incredibly fast to just about everywhere in her body. From diagnosis to death was about 12 weeks. The medications and therapies and the general lack of mobility caused her to become swollen and obese. She was a terribly sweet lady. They took her down to radiology for a scan and the technician made a bunch of really mean comments about her weight because she was too large for our machines so they had to arrange for a transfer to another hospital for her scans and then have her transferred back. The technician thought that because Miss Jeannie was dying and sick that she was deaf or didn't understand English any longer. And so while they were alone she made so many mean comments. Miss Jeannie waited until she was back in her room waiting for her transfer before she started crying. I'll never understand people who feel the need to make others feel less than or badly. Edit. I don't know the whole story about this lady. Just the few weeks I knew her when she was with us in hospital. I've seen pictures of her from as late as 6 months pre-diagnosis and she was just slight above average in height and weight. I imagine the inability to move and take care of herself contributed to her weight gain. But, since I'm not a doctor, I can't make any kind of diagnosis beyond my limited scope of time with her. And no, the tech still works for us. And as a woman. He asked me if I felt lonely. I said I don't think of myself as lonely. He wrote down lonely and underlined it. Edit. Thank you kind strangers for gold and silver. I'll show it to my frying. Oh. You are just another crazy and stressed woman. Turns out I did had a heart problem he just couldn't diagnose. Not sure if psychiatrists count. But. You need to stop talking to me about your past. I have other patients who had it worse than you. You know. I'd only been seeing this woman for two months. It had taken me years to work up the courage to seek help. Though the fear that my problems weren't real problems or weren't important. We'd barely even touched on the trouble I came in wanting help for. Because the doctor decided on week two that I had generalized anxiety disorder. And that was that. Not psychologically hurtful necessarily. But the most terrifying thing I've ever been told. We're going to have to defibrillate you and we don't have time to sedate you. They rolled the crash cart with paddles into my room and I said, get that thing the fuck away from me. And almost cried. My mom was in the room with me and was absolutely hysterical. Thankfully a cardiologist was able to look at my EKG in the nick of time and determined my heart rhythm was stable enough for me to just be transferred to a room for further evaluation without defibrillation. When I was 14. I was raped by this 20 year old dude. 
I was at the hospital and the drive, this old man, who examined me didn't believe me. Asked me if I was lying to get attention. Never have I felt so lost before. Saw my local doctor about my mental health. Which took a turn for the worse after I was assaulted in the street. He then goes into a lecture about how I perceive things. To the point where I have to remind him that I was assaulted. For no reason other than because the other guy was bored and showing off to his friend. The doctor then berated me because, I'm thinking of, the assault, in a negative way. I didn't realize there was a positive to having a visible wound on my face. Edit. Wow. This blew up. Thanks for the comments. Redditors. To clarify. The doctor was a GP. Not a psychologist. And had a student doctor in the room so God knows what impression that left on him. The wound healed and the scar is barely visible anymore anyway. So nothing left for chicks to dig. Me. When I was 9. About to go under anesthesia for the first time ever for oral surgery. And being extremely scared. Nurse. You need to grow up. I've had kids half your age not be as much a scaredy cat as you. My mother was not, by any means, a helicopter parent, but the thrashing she gave that nurse, the other nurse who chuckled at it, and the doctor who came in was insane. And then she took me out of that office, the surgery was not a time-sensitive thing. Just to fix a soon-to-be impacted adult tooth, and for ice cream. I had the surgery done at a different office with a staff that had far better bedside manners. To my wife, about 8 weeks pregnant at a oncologist office after on GYN saw a polyp she wanted someone to look at. Doctor. You need to have a hysterectomy immediately. Us. Shouldn't we wait till the biopsy results come back? Doctor. No. In my opinion if you want to live you need to have a hysterectomy immediately. Turns out it was benign. Discoloration is normal for Pacific Islanders during pregnancy. Asshole got results. From biopsy next day. We were told results till following week. Edit. To those who asked. We waited. Our son is almost 16 now. And never saw that doctor again. Knew he received biopsy results next day because Mill was a doctor also and pathologist who did the biopsy ended up being a friend. Edited first edit to fix typo and explain a little better. We decided to wait the week for biopsy report and looking into getting a second opinion. What are you going to do if your boyfriend would rather you had bigger boobs? Said by the doctor to 15 year old me. I was getting a consultation for a breast reduction. Because sporting G cup was a fucking nightmare. Still got it. No regrets. Finally worked up the courage to work on my mental health problems and asked my doctor for a recommendation to see a therapist. His only response was I'm too poor to get a therapist since my health insurance sucked. That was a bad day. Edit. Don't know if anyone will see this but in perfect timing my university was looking for therapy participants for a study. I now have 6 2-hour therapy sessions booked. For free. I'm so happy. Thank you for all the replies and suggestions. I'm so appreciative. I just don't know how you could be in so much pain being so young. I'm not going to be able to write you a prescription. My response was. You're a dipshit. I came in because I was hurt at work. Doing heavy construction. I never asked for a prescription in the first place. I had assumed I was vetting an x-ray to see if I had broken anything. After years of fertility treatments. We finally got the wife knocked up. Just before the 12 week mark they found something. The something was anencephaly. Not knowing what it was. We kept asking doctors what this meant and got very doctor why answers. The prognosis isn't good or it presents significant challenges to the fetus all of which made it sound bad but somehow manageable. As we continued through the gambit of doctors, we eventually ended up with one who had that declarative Scandinavian accent. When we asked him what does this mean for the child he answered. And GT, this condition is incompatible with life. If it survives to birth, it will live only for days. It was at once soul crushing and a relief. We finally knew how bad it was. But we knew what we had to do. The decision was no longer ours. And while it hurt the clarity was welcome. Recalling this story many years later still makes me feel emotional. As a doctor I gotta tell you something that not many people are willing to admit. About 10 to 15 percent of all health professionals I have met during my time in school are just awful human beings who don't belong in medicine. They lie, cheat, and just don't care about people. 
On the flip side you have about 15% of some of the greatest doctors you ever met who follow up with you and care for you like you are their own family. 70% fall somewhere in the middle. So the truth I'm getting at is that being a doctor is not just the pursuit of those who care for others but a representation of how our society is as a whole. When I was 21 I went to the doctor for a checkup. The doctor asks me to lift my shirt and I do. He immediately says EGH and makes a look of disgust on his face. I was an idiot and was gaining weight too quickly. Due to this I had stretch marks. I've lost the weight and am normal weight now but I still can't shake that moment. This was 8 years ago. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like. If you would like to see more content like this in the future. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified about future videos. Now check out one of these interesting videos.